Welcome to Candid Catholic Convos, a program brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Harrisburg. Our mission is to humanize the church and help you to grow in your faith, love, and understanding. I'm your host, Rachel Troche, a cradle Catholic who's only human and struggled with faith on more than one occasion. Each week, you'll hear engaging, down-to-earth interviews and actionable strategies you can implement into your life with ease to help you grow closer to God. If you're ready to open your heart and step fully into the person God created you to be, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Candid Catholic Convos. A couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to chat with a lot of our seminarians, many of which are about to be or have recently been ordained to the diaconate or the priesthood. And when I say these guys are on fire for Christ, I'm not being facetious. It reminded me of this week's reading about the first Pentecost, the tongues of fire descending on the first apostles gathered in that upper room, and how the Holy Spirit encouraged them to share the gospel with the world, because these men are so eager to share God's love with the Diocese of Harrisburg. What's even more fascinating is that every single one of them started their seminary journey at a different point in their lives. Several of them even had successful careers that they walked away from in order to follow Christ. Without the support of our parishioners, many of them would not be able to attend seminary, which is the equivalent to a graduate level of education and costs roughly $44,000 per year. That's why every year we ask for your generous donation to the Pentecost Collection. Because of your gifts, our seminarians can completely focus on their formation in order to become the best priests possible for our diocese. If you'd like to support them financially in their formation, Gifts can be made during collection at Mass today or anytime at hbgdiocese.org slash Pentecost dash collection. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Justin McClay, Michael Prey, Drew Tangway, Kevin Key, Dozy Onaniju, and Richard Groff, the seminarians this collection directly supports, to chat about how your prayers and financial contributions are making a difference in their walk with Christ. My name is Justin McClay. My home parish is St. Joseph's Mechanicsburg, and I am finishing my second year of philosophy. For the longest time, I was very much pursuing the marriage vocation. That's what I wanted, and it was around that time where I thought that maybe the Lord wasn't calling me to that vocation. And so I felt like that was the time that I really needed to take a step back and really try to discern what the Lord was really calling me to, to pursue. In the back of my head, part of me was thinking, am I crazy to be pursuing this route? Because I did have a 15 year career um, and I had my own house and I had pretty much everything that I had thought I wanted for the longest time. Uh, but then I also kind of realized that there was something missing and I kind of came to the realization, um, I think it was probably summer of 2019, uh, that really, I felt like the house, the career, I felt like it was something that I really could part with if the Lord was really calling me to that. Uh, I was a little bit concerned as to, okay, what are people going to think? You know, how are my coworkers and my staff going to react uh, when I tell all of them? Uh, but it was really, really amazing how much support I got from everybody. The Pentecost collection is very important for myself. Uh, without the generosity of the parishioners throughout the Harrisburg Diocese, it would not be possible for me to, to go to seminary. Uh, it was definitely one of those things that uh, when I was discerning, I wasn't fully understanding of, you know, ultimately what it would entail uh, from the financial aspects and all of the, the generosity that I've seen from the parishioners of, within all of the, the diocese has been very appreciative and it's allowed me to be able to go and focus on my studies and, and really focus on my formation so that I can try to you know, pursue the priesthood with my sole attention focused on that as opposed to any financial obligations.
Uh, I'm just very, very appreciative of all the people that pray for me uh, when I go back to my home parish, and even when I do run into to members of other parishes, when I go and visit other parishes when I'm home on break, uh, anytime an individual stops and says that they're praying for myself and my fellow seminarians, it's greatly appreciated uh, because it is very challenging for us. There is a lot that we are asked to do, uh, and it's all preparing us for the priesthood and all the things that we will be asked to, to take on as a priest, and it's just very appreciative of, of all of their support. My name is Michael Prey. I'm from St. Bernard's Parish in New Bloomfield. I'm in third theology at Mount St. Mary's in Emmitsburg, Maryland. And I'll be ordained to the diaconate um, in just a couple weeks, very much looking forward to, to that awesome. after five years in seminary. So after college, um, I went into teaching and into education. I was a teacher and an administrator um, at an all-boys school. And at that time, I really kind of um, rediscovered the faith and um, in working with the students, taking them to Mass um, and kind of serving as the Catholic liaison or the Catholic voice for them. Um, God kind of pointed me in the direction of realizing that vocation to the priesthood was what he made me for and what he ultimately was calling me for. So that culminated in listening to a homily about vocations where I heard him say, it's okay to finally listen to this and, and say yes. So from that point on, um, I really started a serious discernment and six years later, here I am. Formation at the seminary is like ecclesiastical boot camp. Now that doesn't mean uh, five mile runs, thank God, you know, or push ups or sit ups or anything like that. Um, but what it does mean is kind of being remade um, by focusing on prayer, um, on, you know, intellectual formation, um, spiritual formation, um, and really kind of understanding what God's call actually means, which is different for each person. Um, so I think that no two seminary journeys are exactly the same. Um, but the seminary offers a lot of opportunities to grow and develop based on individual skills and, and interests and opportunities. There's different degrees that you can pursue and different things you can become involved in um, anywhere at the Mount, at least from like being a sports chaplain for, a, for an athletic team to playing the guitar at Praise and Worship Holy Hour on Wednesday evenings. Um, and you don't have to necessarily do all of that, but it's available. So you can kind of choose things that are of interest to you that will also ultimately help um, when you're in a parish. So there's obviously always going to be practical concerns or at least thoughts whenever you're walking away from a, a career um, and self-independence. And you always think, how is this going to actually work? But the best thing is uh, from from day one of being a seminarian for this diocese. Um, the diocese has always supported me, and the people have always supported me. I'm always amazed at how everything I need is taken care of, um, and then some. And I think that the value of the collection um, is giving us the opportunity to prepare ourselves to, to support the people um, of the diocese. Uh, I've said in previous years, but I think it's, it's a pretty good line that the people of the diocese have my back right now. So in the future, I can have their back. Know that the prayers that you give to us and the support you give to us um, means the world, means more than you could know. Um, also know that we are also returning those prayers um, and preparing ourselves uh, to serve you in the future. And it's only through the support that we receive from the Pentecost collection that we can ultimately attain that goal and to serve as another Christ at the altar for the people in the future. So my name is Drew Tangway. I go to uh, Seven Sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish in Middletown. Family moved there about uh, five years ago. Um, I entered seminary uh, seven years ago now. I go to St. Charles Borromeo in Philadelphia, where I'm in third theology, which means, God willing, I'll be ordained a deacon in May, and then I'll be ordained a priest next year. When I was about 14, I started like, daydreaming about what it would be like to be a priest, uh, to say mass, to preach. Um, so I was right around confirmation, and I pushed that away a little bit, 
I uh, wasn't sure, and I, I was pretty sure I wanted to get married, have kids, have a family, all that, <laughs> all the normal stuff. Um, over the years, it kind of, God kept on tapping me on the shoulder and like trying to redirect me where he wanted me. And I kept like more and more kind of pushing away and trying to be like, okay, no, like I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, but eventually, um, I, one, one of the things that really helped me was I went to Quo Vadis Days. And seeing the seminarians were so normal uh, and just being able to talk to them, um, I realized, okay, like maybe this is, like this isn't completely crazy. <laughs> um, so then I, I started being more willing to talk to God about it and to think about it. And so by the time I was um, the summer going into my junior year of high school, I kind of made a deal with him that I would, I would apply to seminary and I'd give it a shot. And then... Um, if we didn't like it, then we, then we could split up, <laughs> call it there. Um, but then by the time I was a senior in high school, I was really excited to get into seminary. And then every year since then, I've just grown more and more certain. Life in seminary, it's, um, it's very different from any other school, especially grew up, grew up going to public school. And so seminary, it has a very intentional focus, not just toward education, but toward formation. Is, is what we call it. One of the main things that the Pentecost Collection does is it helps with our tuition at the seminary. Um, it might be an unusual school, but it is still school. <laughs> and so things still cost money uh, from food to heating to um, paying our professors. The diocese has, uh, through the Pentecost Collection, been able to help me enormously to subsidize that, uh, which is a great help for me uh, and I know my fellow seminarians as well, uh, we're not allowed to have jobs while we're in seminary uh, because we want to focus all of our time and effort into prayer and formation. And so we don't really have the means to, to pay for ourselves to get through uh, college seminary or, or then graduate school. And the diocese, um, because of the generosity of the people, is able to subsidize that or even cover it sometimes. So our entire theology time is completely covered by uh, the Diocese of Harrisburg through the Pentecost Collection. The time and the effort and the prayer and the money that people give so that I can be a priest is absolutely humbling. And it's incredible to see the potential that they see in me. And it really makes me uh, do everything that I can to live up to that. And so... Um, and so I, I never want to miss class in the morning. Like, even though I have to get up early in the morning to go to mass and get to class, I never think about missing out on those things because that's what the people of God are paying for me to be able to do. And that's what they need from me. Um, and so even when, even when I am getting restless from sitting in a classroom for three hours <laughs> and just feeling like I, I really just want to get out there and do something, I remind myself that, that this is what I'm supposed to do right now, and this is what the people need from me right now, um, that I need to invest, uh, I need to match their investment uh, with my own uh, in order to, to get everything we can out of this. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much to the people of God, all the, all the mothers and fathers and children and grandparents and grandchildren and everyone in between. Uh, thank you not only for your support, not only for your prayers and for your donations, but just for being you. Um, that your example is really what leads me to want to serve. You are the people that I'm, I'm looking forward to devoting my life to and sacrificing everything for. So thank you so much for everything that you do, everything that you are. Um, and please continue to pray for me and my brothers. Um, and we will, we will continue to pray for you and look forward to serving you. My name is Deacon Kevin Key. I'm from St. Patrick's Church in Carlisle, and hopefully I will be ordained a priest of God in, on June 3rd at the cathedral. I think God talks to all of us in different ways. Um, so for me, it was kind of an inkling or a feeling that he was encouraging me over a couple of years. We, had a, we moved to a different parish, and we had another parish priest, and he just got really close to our family and to me and really showed how the church isn't outside of my life. Um, the church is part of my life. The priesthood is part of my life, part of my family's life, part of the community's life. And he really showed that um, a priest can be normal and 
part of everyone else's experience of the Catholic faith and almost integral. I mean, I think that priest really showed my family how to be better Catholics as a whole. And I benefited from that. My whole family benefited from that. And then I realized that's something that I want to share, that I want to help other people with. Formation is six years long. It's a long time. You get discouraged. You get down. You feel like you haven't made any progress. You feel like you've been doing the same thing day in and day out, and there's nothing to show for it. And then you get a packet of cards from school kids. And then you get a check in the mail from someone you don't know. And then you get an uh, article in The Witness. You know, or then you hear um, at a local parish church, we pray for vocations for the diocese. And you're like, OK, there are lots and lots of amazing people who are backing me, who are behind me, who are praying for me, who support me. And they want me to be a good holy seminarian so that I can be a good priest for them. And they're not seeing the fruits of their gifts for so long. You know, you don't know how many seminaries you've prayed for who have left. You don't know how many seminaries you've prayed for who are still in formation. You know, the people of God commit so much to us and they often don't see the fruits, fruits of those gifts for so long. And I have to remind myself of that too, to be patient with what God is giving me. So that just encourages me all the more like, okay, we don't see the fruits of our gifts right now, but we will. And you look forward to that future hope that God is promising. God keeps his promises. That is so true. Um, so I just keep going and I keep trying my best so that I can give back to those who have given so much to me. Well, money is a tool and the Pentecost collection is a collection of those tools to be used. And I think that our diocese is very prudent and generous in using that tool to allow seminarians and those in formation to give themselves fully to that time to be fully committed to that formation academically, spiritually, pastorally, and humanly, personally. That gift, that tool frees us up to be totally committed in those ways so that we're not concerned with having a job during the summer or having a late night job or a, a morning job to take ourselves through that pathway that's kind of given to us in a way. Um, so it really just makes gives us freedom to be fully who we need to be. Thank you, because without your gifts, without your support, I wouldn't have been able to continue all the way through formation with the necessary freedom I needed to give myself fully, because that's what I want to do. I want to be totally yours, like John Paul II says. I want to be totally the churches, totally Harrisburg's. And the Pentecost Collection and all the support that we receive, that I have received, um, really encourages me and supports me, but gives me that freedom to then give totally of myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Deacon Dozi Onanuju. Um, my parish is Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish in Lewisburg. And I am a deacon, and I am looking forward to being ordained a priest in June 2023. So that's pretty exciting, and I'm glad to have gone through all these years of formation for the priesthood. I'm originally from Nigeria. I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria, which is a very busy city. And I went to boarding school from 7th through 12th grade. But I did high school in Nigeria. And then I finished up high school as well in, uh, in the United States, in Maryland, an all-boys boarding school. And, um, and then I went to college at Bucknell University. So, But throughout that year, senior year of high school and also in college, I was the thought of priesthood came to my mind on and off. And... Sometimes I pushed it to the back of my mind, but as we can see right here and now, God won. And I entered seminary, and here I am. I think one big doubt was like, will I be able to survive? Will I be fine? And because I studied electrical engineering, and I, at some point I thought like, you know, maybe I should be working as an engineer right now. But then God just showed me through just different things that happened that he would provide for me. And things would be okay, that this is really what he's calling me to do. So so that was a struggle for a while. And I, I got good counsel from my spiritual director at the time. He just said, just wait it out, just pray, just trust in the Lord. Don't make any rash decisions. And I'm glad that I didn't make any rash decision because I was like, maybe I should leave. Maybe I shouldn't be here. I started to panic. Maybe I should be out working. But, um, but then he, he helped me just pray with that and, and trust in the Lord during that process. And 
so that was that was the big uh, moment I would say. And there have been you know other struggles here and there, but overall it's been a beautiful journey. Right now I'm just reflecting on loving God more and loving the people more, um, being there for the people of the parish, being there for people who need God's love. Um, that necessity for availability can't be emphasized enough and just wanting to serve God and in, in whoever, whomever I meet, whether it's at the parish, whether it's on the street, whoever, where, wherever it is. And, uh, and I, I keep asking the Lord for a, a deeper love to be able to do that because I can't do it on my own. I need his help to be able to do all, um, all of that. So, so that's my reflection, just that availability and poverty of spirit to give, give all I have to the Lord and to his people. It's really heartwarming to be, to know that I'm supported by so many people in parishes throughout our diocese, uh, praying for me, supporting me, some write cards and support and just things like that. And it's, it's, it's just beautiful to know that the people of God are right behind me. You know, they're, they're there, they, you know, they, they love us, they, they care for us and it's, 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 it's wonderful and I'm very grateful for that. It's very humbling to know that just so many people are supporting you and praying for you and just and and just love you because you're you're going into this ministry you're going to shepherd them minister to them and feed them with God's word and and the body and blood of the Lord so it's 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 amazing and I'm very I am floored by that privilege and experience. Yeah, seminary is not cheap to to put it simply um Without the support of the people of the diocese, I wouldn't be able to go to seminary for six years, um, paying college tuition, you know, so I'm very grateful for that. And and not just that, just things above and beyond, like the stipends we get for books and for, you know, personal supplies and things like that. And it's all comes from the generosity of the people of the parish and the people in different parishes throughout our diocese. Um, so I'm very, very, very grateful for that. And I can't Thank you all enough for all you've done in terms of financial support and your prayerful support as well. My name is Deacon Richard Groff. I am from Holy Trinity Parish in Columbia, Pennsylvania. I have been a lifelong parishioner. Uh, I was baptized in Holy Trinity, and uh, this year I'm going to be ordained, and I'm going to be celebrating my very first Mass at the uh, Parish of Holy Trinity on the Feast of the Holy Trinity. I am a very stubborn man. I, uh, I heard the call uh, and Jesus kept calling and I kept uh, deferring <laughs> uh, to that call. Uh, I always felt, oh, there's somebody else that could do this perhaps better. Um, but I always had in my heart, I could do that. And um, I always loved church. I love the sacraments. I love the celebrations. Uh, and I thought, I could see myself doing that, and yet at the same time, entering the seminary and going through that process, I thought, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, so I, I did a lot of other things, and as it turned out, God had a sense of humor um, and allowed me to work for the church. Uh, so I was able to work as a youth minister for many, many years in the parish, and then I started to work at other parishes. Um, I've had the opportunity to be a director of religious education, uh, and as well as a campus minister at Franklin and Marshall College. Uh, God has given me a lot of on-the-job training uh, before I entered the seminary. Having worked for the church, I have a very realistic job preview, if you will. Um, I see how parishes work. I understand that um, sometimes the younger men, I think they have an ideal of, oh, I'm going to be a priest. And uh, in some respects, a long time ago, there was a pedestal that you got to step on right away. Uh, that's no longer the case. I think uh, today, if anything, you're starting below ground level. You have to work your way up and earn the respect of your people uh, to lead them successfully and to trust you. Uh, our uh, rector, Monsignor Baker, uh, over the past six years during all of the scandal, and uh, he would always say, gentlemen, you're not part of the problem, but you are going to be part of the solution. You've inherited this, and God is calling you at this particular time for this particular um, ministry to develop trust among people. And so I think, you know, I could have gone in many years before, but why, why did God call me at this point? Um, so I think I'm able to bring the practicality of having lived on my own. Um, I had 
to pay bills. I have, uh, you know, at work. Uh, I know how hard it is to make ends meet from month to month. So when parishioners come, I can relate to that. The uh, Pentecost collection is very, very important in the life of the church. Uh, it is another um, necessity uh, that we need the Pentecost collection. First and foremost, I would say the people's prayers are, are the most important for us. Um, it may sound cliched, but without prayer, none of us could do what we're doing. And be assured of our prayers for all of you as well, because that's what we do um, in seminary. We do pray for all of our benefactors. We pray for all people. Um, so that's the beauty of the priesthood, to have the liturgy of the hours, to be able to pray. But on a practical level, uh, we're not allowed to work. Uh, having had a full-time job with benefits, I had to give all of that up, again, in a leap of faith, because where do you, what's going to happen if I leave my job uh, and go into study? Uh, and it would really be impossible um, to have the education, to have a formation, uh, a good solid formation, to become a priest of Jesus Christ without a six-year process or an eight-year process. Those gifts of people, their generosity um, is so um, humbling to receive that, first of all, and to be able to thank them. And we can't adequately thank people enough for all their goodness and kindness and, and their um, uh, generosity to the church. But God says he's never outdone in generosity. What is given, uh, he's going to increase a hundredfold and give back. And so, God willing, you are going to be receiving good and holy men to serve you and your families to be there to administer the sacraments because without priest, we don't have the Eucharist. We don't have the sacraments. I'm so thankful uh, for uh, Bishop Gaynor who has given me this opportunity uh, to study for the priesthood and um, for all the people in the Diocese of Harrisburg for their constant prayers, their generous support. Um, and just, I'm just thankful to God that I've gotten this far and I, I hope to continue and, and to do uh, uh, the best I can uh, as, as a priest. Thank you so much for listening. Our goal at the Diocese of Harrisburg is to walk with you on your faith journey. So if this episode resonated with you in any way, the easiest way to show your appreciation is by sharing this program with your network or by leaving a review on your listening platform. You can also support us financially by making a donation online at hbgdiocese.org slash D-A-C and clicking the make a donation button. Thanks again, and we'll see you at church on Sunday.